Hi, I'm Menlo Park Mayor Jen Wallison. Good evening and welcome to the City Council's January 5th Emergency City Council meeting. In accordance with Government Code Section 54956.5, this is a virtual meeting with City Council, City staff, and members of the public participating remotely to promote social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. I would like to introduce city council members and staff present. Vice Mayor Cecilia Taylor, city council members Drew Combs and Betsy Nash. Staff present include city manager Justin Murphy, city attorney Nira Doherty, and city clerk Judy Heron. City clerk Heron, would you please provide instructions to the city council and members of the public for how this meeting will proceed? Thank you, Mayor Willison. So again, echoing a welcome to our emergency January 5th City Council meeting. For members of the public who wish to participate in public comment for the item on tonight's agenda, after the mayor calls for comment on that item, we'll ask that you engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in from a landline or a cell phone, you can press star nine at that time. And that concludes my uh, instructions. Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Karen. So we have one item on the agenda tonight under regular business. Under regular business, the City Council considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require City Council approval. The regular business item we have tonight is C1, adopt a resolution ratifying the Director of Emergency Services Proclamation of Local Emergency pursuant to government code section 54956.5. I'd now like to introduce our city manager, Justin Murphy, to introduce this item. Good evening, uh, Mayor Wilson and city council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. <clears throat> As the City Council knows, uh, Menlo Park and our neighboring jurisdictions have experienced extreme uh, storm events in the past week, causing uh, tremendous. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> impacts and upcoming significant storm events are forecasted. Uh, yesterday, I issued a proclamation declaring a state of emergency within the city. This is in line with recent proclamations at the state and county level in many cities within San Mateo County. State law and the municipal code empower the city manager acting as the director of emergency services to proclaim the existence or, or threatened existence of a local emergency. Having spent many hours working with the county and other cities and partner agencies and managing staff and day-to-day -day operations throughout this atmospheric river events of the previous week, I believe it's important to pro proclaim a local emergency. Pro proclaiming an emergency will activate emergency authorities, all of which I hope not to utilize, but, but which I believe must be prepared for. The municipal code requires the city council to ratify the proclamation within 24 hours, or the proclamation will have no further force in effect. The document included in the packet uh, and, uh, and on our website is a resolution proclaiming the existence of a local emergency and ratifying the proclamation that I issued yesterday. Approving the resolution this evening will allow staff to continue our focus on storm recovery and preparation while advancing our city operations and services to the greatest extent possible. Uh, as I conclude, I'd like to recognize the efforts of city staff this, over the past week in particular. <clears throat> uh, those working in the field in public works and police, our dispatch team, public information team and all the people serving in our emergency operations center or others who have taken out of the ordinary assignments to assist during storm events. I'd also like to recognize our partner agencies, especially the Menlo Park Fire Protection District, who's in attendance tonight, the San Francisco Creek Joint Powers Authority, including each member agency, Valley Water, City of Palo Alto, City of East Palo Alto, and One Shoreline, and the greater San Mateo County, uh, especially uh, uh, executive Mike Callagy. I personally experienced a trem tremendous spirit of collaboration, cooperation across these agencies. And <clears throat> finally, I'd like to recognize positive energy. <laughs> Other residents and businesses of the community, there have been multiple examples of neighbors helping neighbors 
which helps makes all of us stronger and more resilient. So that concludes my introduction. Happy be to answer any questions, and there's others available on staff to assist as needed. So with that, thank you. Thank you very much, City Manager Murphy, um, both for that update um, and also for the tremendous efforts that you and your staff um, have been putting in this past week tirelessly um, serving our residents and the community. So at this time, um, Ms. Herring, can you please call for public comment on this item? Yes, thank you, Mayor Willison. So at this time, if any member of the public wishes to speak on agenda item C1, adopt a resolution ratifying the Director of Emergency Services proclamation of a local emergency pursuant to government code section 54956.5, please engage that hand feature in the bottom of your screen. Calling in from a landline or a cell phone, please press star nine. This will be the final call for public comment on our agenda item C1. I see a few hands. Give me just one moment. Okay, and so our first speaker will be Sue Connolly, followed by Thomas Pressing. Hello, Council and Justin, can you hear me all right? Yes, yes, go right ahead. Okay, great. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone, um, actually Betsy Nash and Jen, for sending out the emails to your constituents. That really helped uh, get people connected to certain links. Justin, thank you to you and your team for all you've done so far to get everything ready and uh, try to address what's come down the pike. Um, one of the things I would really like to request, and I know everyone's plates are full, but I do get a ton of uh, updates from Palo Alto through Nixle and through some other sites. And I do wish there was a better push mechanism for Menlo Park to get word out with links. Um, you know, should Betsy or Jen not continue their council personship? <laughs> um, what happens to those emails that have been so helpful. So I just, I know there's a lot ahead that needs to be done, but I really would like to request that there's more information on the website, uh, on the city site. I've been poking around for you know months and weeks and especially most recently. And uh, just having a good roster of links to key sites and resources. And then also having um, stronger push mechanism to get information out because we will have things like wildfires, fire, yeah, uh, flooding and you know traffic issues, and then of course um, the potential of earthquakes. So I'd love to see this opportunity with the federal funding to really um, get Menlo Park's uh, outbound communications better. I've signed up everywhere I possibly can, and I still find that there's this remarkable shortage of information. With all due respect, thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Okay, and then our next speaker is Tom Pressing. Council members, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Tom. Okay, uh, have you reset the clock or should I wait? Thank you. Uh, good evening, council members and city manager. Um, I'm Tom Pressing. You know me as the former chair of the Fire District Advisory Board, former president of ADAPT, and I'm still a Fire District CERT. I am mystified why the Fire District did not call up its CERTs to assist in flooding remediation, and why we in uh, Menlo Park City and the City Council waited so long to inform us that this was a serious rainstorm. Palo Alto OES had kept their citizens up to date for almost two weeks now. SMC alerts have continuously gone out. Atherton activated its ADAPT on Tuesday and deployed them for flood remediation. Yesterday, the town with ADAPT established an evacuation center for its residents, as well as evacuation routes. I received not a single communication from my district council member, nor Menlo Park regarding 
the flooding along El Camino or other city locations or down trees or other uh, potential citizen um, problems. The announcement of this state of emergency, which I was shown today, states it will now activate emergency authorities, all of which you hope not to use. This announcement hopes to designate evacuation routes, to close dangerous streets and or pub, uh, public places, to require the city to provide emergency services and to attain supplies, equipment, and to protect public property and life. What this state of emergency really proclaims is that the Menlo Park Council leadership is not ready for an in in inevitable disaster emergency event when you have been advised that they are going to take place. So I ask you, is this not a wake up call? How long after this rain has diminished will it take you to establish in public city evacuation routes, of which by the way, I already have a copy. How long will you, it take you to ensure that you are going to have sand piles and a shovel with, uh, with bags, which you did not have today, all of today? So it does this no good to have a, a shovel and a sand pile with no um, bags? How long are you going to continue to delay selecting a director of uh, preparedness for the city? emergency preparedness, which we sorely need. How long are you going to place one obstacle after another in front of Menlo Park citizen emergency responders, Lynn Bramlett and the MPC Ready in their effort to create an organized city response that does not need your state of emergency permission to save lives or reduce injuries? Council, city manager, this is a wake up call. Please do so and thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. Okay, I am seeing no further hands. My apologies, we have another speaker. One moment to reset our time. Okay, and our final speaker will be Lynn Bramlett. Good evening, Council. So um, first, I, I agree completely with what Tom Pressing is saying. This should be a wake-up call. We're overdue for an eruption of the Hayward Fault. What if it erupts tonight around 2 o'clock? Or even worse, in the next at Pineapple Express that's come our way. So it's time to start following evidence-based practices. And by the way, the, a former Council established the policy that we did, did do this years ago and it hasn't been implemented. So you have residents who want to work with the government and other parts of the government and the holdup has been the government. Now I'm encouraged today and one reason I didn't plan to make a comment and my comment would have been very different if I hadn't had the pleasure and Tom Pressing and some of these others may not realize this yet of hearing from the new assistant city manager, Stephen Stolte. So we had a very positive conversation. He's used to working with volunteers. Um, you know, of course, we didn't discuss the full parameters of this, but you know, it, he seemed like a ray of hope. And so we need this. We need community involved, and people are, um, you know, receptive and ready and. There also are liability issues for our city. Of course, human life is paramount and, and a lot of this could be prevented. So it's anyway, I thought Tom was very eloquent. You've heard me come before you. You know, it's time to you know get away from business as usual here in Menlo Park. So you have people who haven't given up. I haven't given up because it's the cost is it's too important. The human lives, the suffering. This is preventable. And by the way, the federal government is getting wise to the idea of municipalities who delay taking need needed action that they could have taken, and then they want money later. So they're kind of tightening that up. So it's in our best interest to take a proactive approach. Our new fire chief is wonderful. I think we have all the pieces in place. 
but but we I think we need a, a meeting just to discuss how we're going to move forward. But anyway, I'm encouraged today due to speaking with Stephen Stolte, the new assistant city manager. And I do thank the staff for their efforts. I thank you for your efforts here tonight. And I thank people like Sue Connolly and her nursing who are here tonight and the others who are here and who haven't spoken. Thank you for your comment. Seeing no further hands, Mayor Willison, you may continue. Thank you, City Clerk Heron, and thank you to Ms. Connolly, uh, Mr. Pressing, and Ms. Bramlett for your very thoughtful um, comments about how we can get more prepared and looking at best practices and taking actions sooner than later. Um, I wanted to ask um, City Manager Murphy, um, I know that this meeting is particularly agendized for our current state of emergency, and a lot of the comments raised um, have to do with uh, kind of autopsy analysis on how we can better prepare for the future. Um, but I wanted to offer you an opportunity, um, City Manager Murphy, to respond, particularly uh, for residents to know the best um, lists to sign up for to get up-to-date information um, on emergencies um, and then also um, if there's any updates on the uh, hiring of uh, emergency disaster preparedness position or anything else you'd like to add thank you uh, let's see so in terms of the um uh, happy to, to to follow up with the Miss Conley specifically on some of her observations because I think that's where it would be best to kind of get to some of the specifics. But the uh, signing up, um, if going to MenloPark.gov website, scrolling to the bottom, subscribe. Those are the opportunities for the um, for the subscriptions. So I think some of the things that she was uh, saying, I, I'd rather rather get to the specifics of as opposed to talk to generality. So there's the subscribing to the Menlo Park doc of um, uh, website and opportunities there. The other other main tool is uh, SMC uh, alert uh, that's used by San Mateo County, but the city also has uh, access to that. Uh, so those would be the two two main tools for which the city would be pushing things out and then pushing out through various forms of social media um, in, in multiple fashions. So uh, there's uh, multiple efforts to uh, push things out. Um, we we feel like we've had success with uh, some some people. If it's not hitting everybody, happy to um, work to improve on that. So. Um, the other topic of uh, hiring, as the uh, council may know, uh, we um, were, were fortunate to uh, hire uh, uh, some some people recently. One's assistant city manager, so hopefully we can be able to make that announcement um, shortly. But uh, he's uh, for his first day was Tuesday, and so his uh, he's he's been in the EOC pretty much the, the whole time with since he's been uh, with the city, and so. Uh, one of his uh, focuses will be on uh, the topic of emergency preparedness, and so he was able to spend some time with Ms. Uh, Bramlett today. So that's a it's a big focus for me and the city. Um, in terms of other specific hiring, uh, as you may may also know, the city is still um, uh, looking to fill some other positions, including within uh, human resources, to be able to kind of pursue some of those other recruitments, but. The uh, emergency preparedness topic is uh, is uh, one of the higher priorities. There's there's quite a few uh, vacancies, as you may know, that the, the city's looking to fill. Were there other? Um, I, I guess my uh, last question that this might tie in everything is, what type of learnings or how are, how are we planning on taking this emergency and um, and having an opportunity to reflect and digest and how we can uh, be better prepared going forward. Correct. Yes, that's that's part of the um, 
uh, uh, em er, em emergency uh, routine so that that there will be uh, debriefs from this. We're still in the, the in the middle of one, and so we're we're still needing to make sure that we're a uh, combination of partial recovery and preparation for any upcoming events. So, uh, but yes, no, that's that will be a part of what, what we're working towards, uh, lessons learned, opportunities for improvements. Um, uh, as I as I mentioned, we've been experiencing a lot of positivity, so I'd like to build on that positivity and uh, move move in that that direction. So I, I could say to um, everybody that I've been interacting with, it's been uh, very positive and rewarding. So I'd like to kind of build build off of that. Thank you so much, uh, City Manager Murphy. And again, please uh, express our um, gratitude to city staff. And with that, I would like to open up um, discussion among council members, um, if anyone would like to say anything. Sure, this is true, I'll go. <laughs> First, I, I wanna say um, it's interesting because I was reading a, um, a, a reader comment on a, a local newspaper website where a Palo Alto resident was actually complaining uh, that they got alerts from Menlo Park but hadn't heard from <laughs> from Palo Alto. So I, I do think it's all in the framing and I do think it's important that a few voices don't don't lead to us framing the city's response as anything other than what it was, which I, I think was exemplary um, in this situation. Uh, again, I live in the Willows, represent District 2, which, which saw a lot of the uh, the flooding. The creek did um, come over the bank, and we had flooding on Emma. Um, I found that the city has been incredibly responsive in, in the cleanup and responsiveness, clearing out some of the debris, um, as helping to clear out some of the debris as the, um, uh, the, um, the creek uh, was rising, sending out alerts mm -hmm. in connection with that, and in conjunction with 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 Palo Alto and with with the JPA, um, providing sandbag stations, um, uh, moving them closer in um, where we didn't have one, having a sort of pop up sandbag station at the, the Pope Island. I've seen this the you know number of crews out uh, cutting cutting trees in the aftermath and the lead up to this this uh, this. Uh, most recent storm. I've seen uh, the city manager out there. Uh, I know the director of public works has been out there. Um, and so it, it has, has been an all hands um, on deck effort. And I think uh, I've seen it. A lot of residents have, have seen it um, and commented on it. Uh, and, and again, the city manager and city staff has, have been incredibly responsive uh, to, uh, to, to, to the concerns. It is <laughs> Uh, it was a, a, a you know a, a, a natural <laughs> event uh, emergency that there is some some limits to our ability to to, to mitigate those and and so um and and so yeah the, there obviously was 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 damage done we we the, the, there are, again like I say limits to what the city can do and what what um you, you know anyone can do in this situation and I do want to <clears throat> also uh, be clear that like, when people talk about, um, uh, or when I, I hear these comments uh, comparing the, the city's response in these scenarios to other cities, it, it's not clear to me when I look at what those other cities deliver that, that, that there is some clear delta. Um, and and while I, I understand and appreciate that in some circumstances, volunteers can have a really important impact, um, I, I don't think we could have volunteers out there clearing you know, debris in the river, or cutting, uh, cutting down down some of the trees that that um, are, are cu cutting up some of the trees that fell. So, so there is a lot of that work, of which is not is not volunteer work. And uh, for a small city, then saying that like let's devote resources uh, to to organizing volunteers, um, and then also assuming that liability, and and what actually they're going to be delivering um, is is to me always something that I, I find a little dubious. The volunteering and the engagement that that is of value is what you do for your neighbors, for those close by, and you don't need the city for that. You don't need the city um, to activate you in any way when it comes to helping your neighbors, when it comes to sort of seeing if your neighbors needs help getting access to sandbags. And so this idea that somehow that the city has has failed or has not done something appropriately because some people don't feel that they got this bespoke outreach. It's just something I I find it hard to kind of sit here and, and listen to, 
because it's just inaccurate. Um, and so, and so I wanted to make sure before we close out this meeting, and I'm happy to move the motion, um, but I wanted to make it make it clear my thoughts um, because I've seen that the city workers out there um, who who came in, um, left their families uh, to to um, to 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 make sure that they were meeting the needs of of, of the city, and, and I, I just want to make sure that 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 was recognized and, and that we didn't frame the city's response by what I think were a couple of inaccurate voices of the situation. Um, thank you, Councilmember Combs. So did I hear a motion in there? There was a motion. Okay. Um, uh, Vice Mayor Taylor or Councilmember Nash, do you want to um, comment and then um, potentially second? Uh, Councilmember Nash. So I would just like to um, thank both the speakers because I think there is always um, more we can do, but especially to um, hop on what Council Member Combs said because um, my experience has been just an excellent response given the situation from staff and even beyond the given the situation. I just think they have done an excellent job. I've seen people um, who are chipping in just in every way they can, um, staff members who are helping with the sandbags, um, helping in just all over the city. And also as um, residents have reported to me various um, situations, the city has been very fast to respond to them, um, cleaning up a, an acacia tree that came down in the creek, um, other, anyway, just situations around the city. This, I'm it just can have nothing but praise for staff and what they've been doing. Um, so I'm happy to second the motion. Thank you, Council Member Nash. Um, Vice Mayor Taylor, did you have anything you want to add? Not at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Taylor. Um, so, City Clerk Karen, I believe we have a motion and a second. Yes, thank you, Mayor Nash, or Mayor Willison, my apologies. Um, we have a motion and by City Council Member Combs and a second by City Council Member Nash to adopt a resolution ratifying the Director of Emergency Services Proclamation of Local Emergency pursuant to Government Code Section 54956.5. Any further City Council question or discussion? Seeing none, by roll call vote, City Council Member Combs? Yes. City Council Member Nash? Yes. Vice Mayor Taylor? Yes. Mayor Willison? Yes. And the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, with that being our only item on the agenda, I again want to uh, thank everyone uh, who has worked so hard um, helping their neighbors, um, helping each other during this um, trying time. And again, thank our city staff for their um, incredible efforts. And with that, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you.